Hello, Sim Gamers, and welcome to episode zero. Starting a new campaign in Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access. We're going to get into exploration mode for science. Let's go ahead and start a new campaign in exploration mode. Build your science agency from humble beginnings, starting with a small suite of parts. Perform experiments and complete missions to earn science. Use science to unlock more parts at the Research and Development Center. We're playing on normal difficulty, but I will make one tweak. I'm going to bring the tolerance distance for docking down to 100%, basically making it slightly harder than normal. Um, Sim Exploration is the campaign name, and we have the simulated rocketry. Choose this for our symbol and get our colors set up. So we're going to go ahead and find this sort of kind of darkish construction orange that I've been gravitating towards. Somewhat similar to this. And this is a point of feedback I might like to make to the developers. If this um, preview window here gave me a preview of what my color scheme looked like when I was making adjustments here, that'd be a really nice quality of life update. We'll go ahead and set those agency colors. I'm going to turn cadet orientation off because I'll be talking you through all of this. And here we are the new Kerbal Space Center with new things available to us for uh, this mode. So we have Mission Control, where we can view and track all missions that you have been assigned to. So this is the first place to go to start off uh, any, our basically any set of work that we want to do. Our first mission is to launch a rocket. Time to launch the Kerbal Space Program's inaugural vessel, a fully functional rocket. Hello, Director. I am Dr. Kerry Kerman, the Department Head of Mission Control. Mission Control is just one of many impressive buildings we've finished. I've, it's got that new building smell and everything. Here you can access everything you need to embark on missions to earn science. If you're interested in tips and tricks, exciting discoveries, life around campus, and more info on missions, join me for a mission brief. Read it all or just a bit. It's just like space. There's no pressure. <laughs> When the mission's last objective is complete, come back here to submit your mission report. After a quick mission debrief from me, we'll turn your paperwork into sweet, sweet science. If you want some practice, go to the training center and take the Missing the Ground refresher course. After that, it's time to get to work. Or as I like to say, shoot for the mun. Now that we have a director, it's time to build and launch our program's inaugural vessel. For our first mission, your objective is to launch a rocket from Kerbin and achieve an altitude of 10,000 meters. It's hard to have a space program without launching a rocket. Feel free to track your mission and poke around the mission tracker. Poke gently though, all the equipment is new. When you're done, come on back and submit your report. Good luck, Director. So we've established the mission parameters for what we're going to be doing for our inaugural launch for Episode 0. That means we need to go to the Vehicle Assembly Building and build ourselves a launch vehicle that's capable of accomplishing that mission. We have a limited number of parts. So we have the Mark 1 tin can. We have the LVT-45 swivel. A stack decoupler, which we'll use right now to mount on here. So I'm just building a very, very basic first rocket. Back up to fuel tanks, we have the FLT-100 and the FLT-200. We'll put on a single FLT-200 with the Methalox swivel down below. Um, we'll put on, you know, a rudimentary set of stabilizers here. For symmetry, 4 by symmetry is easy enough to work with. Actually, this rocket's not going to need it. I'm not going to worry about that and a parachute on top for recovery. So here we've assembled our very first fully functional rocket. It's got fuel, it's got an engine, it can decouple the stack, and this will come down and land independently. With that, let's go ahead and get ourselves launched. Okay, here we are with our very first rocket at Kerbal Space Center. Tiny rocket ready to go. One important thing we're going to be looking at throughout this entire mission is this flashing light because it tells us there's more research to be made if we just click this button. So clicking it um, 
gives us any observations or other science experiments that we have based on our equipment and our crew on board. He says there is no place like home, getting us four additional science for this crew observation. Let's get the countdown underway and get ourselves going on our first inaugural flight. And we have liftoff. I'm going to pitch pretty aggressively over here initially because I want a trajectory out onto the water. And have our guy go prograde and then we can collect more experiments. So here we have another four science for that one. And now that we've exhausted our fuel, we're just coasting. We've gotten our science reward for the mission accomplished. And we're just coasting up to the top of this uh, of this trajectory. Taking a look at our map and zooming in, this is approximately what our trajectory looks like. Our app is at, at 27,000 meters. And this uh, dynamic music is some of the best parts of this game. And as far as I can tell, the uh, wobbly rocket bugs and other um, atmospheric pressure bugs and things like that have been really worked out, smoothed over, and with the uh, addition of experiment, um, the experiment game mode, it gives us a full game loop to play. Get mission, build rocket to accomplish mission, grab science along the way, recover um, rocket safely, turn in missions and science, buy new parts, and that expands our capabilities to go to different places. And this is basically the point in, in Kerbal Space Program 1 that I first became interested when we had that full game loop. I'm going to go ahead and use the SAS to kick us around to basically facing retrograde, facing backwards, and get rid of that stage and deploy our parachute to slow our descent. At this point, we are good to fast forward time and get in. And I, I was being intentionally diligent about the science that I'm recovering because the more science you recover during a mission, basically the faster you're able to get through the science tech tree. Break into the cloud layer, 1,000 meters, our parachute has deployed. We'll take a further dive into some of these in future episodes, but here we have the mission tracker, which is showing us any active missions that we haven't claimed yet. We uh, obviously successfully uh, finished the one mission. Here's our research inventory of research that we've gotten so far, so we have eight additional science to bring along with us. And with us now splashed down, if I click this, we gather more science. So we now have 12 data to bring home along with our mission rewards of 25 for completing the mission. Let's go ahead and recover this vessel. And head to mission control to claim our rewards. Welcome back. Thrilling work on the launch pad today. A reporter passed out because of all the excitement. Then again, it could have been the rocket fumes. They asked all about you, but I just said, no comment. I think a joke went over their heads. <laughs> nice. Nice. Anyway, you're off to a great start. After our debrief, submit your mission report and earn some science. And don't forget to swing by the R&D center to see what new parts are available. The folks in R&D have some ideas for some new cool advancements, and a little bit of science can make those ideas real. When you're done unlocking new technologies, return here for your next mission. And a nice rewarding animation for completing this. Thanks, science. And we're going to take a look in the R&D center. We have 37 science accumulated. And here's just a quick look. We're not going to unlock anything yet. We'll take a look at that in actual episode one of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program. Until then, I'm Sim Gamer, and this is Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access for science. <laughs>